All right, welcome back to another video. Today's video, I'll be making a modification to the stereo system on my 2019 CRV LX. This does apply to higher trim models as well. Although there's a lot less of a chance you're gonna to wanna to replace the radio on your EX or above because it does come with a relatively nice infotainment system. They have been plagued with some problems, but on the LX, it just comes with a base model stereo. It does uh, have a factory backup camera built into the five inch screen. It will do Bluetooth streaming. It will play Pandora, but it's not the best sounding system and you can't do Apple CarPlay or Android Auto or any other advanced features on this small entry level radio. So I'm gonna be replacing it with a aftermarket navigation radio that runs on the Android operating system. All right, so in preparation for this build, I ordered this uh, aftermarket radio, and you cannot, at least right now, it is uh, the beginning of December 2019, you cannot buy this anywhere in the United States. So I did have to order this. I ordered it from the company Joying, and it was shipped from China. I did have it within four days after ordering it. It came via DHL. So we're gonna go ahead and unbox it, and I'll show you the difference. Okay, so inside of the box, I have a greeting card, some kind of standard issue, poorly translated Chinese manual, that's it. A pack of wiring harnesses. This is your uh, CAN interface. That's interfaces from the Honda network to this aftermarket stereo. There's lots of other cables, external microphone, a cell antenna, Wi-Fi antenna. Um, here's a bunch of adapters for the factory. Uh, antenna connections, another antenna. Right, so I'm going to pull this out of here. In the bottom of the box, we have the GPS antenna and some USB connectors. Here is the unit itself. Forgive me, I'm doing this one handed. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get it out of the plastic and we'll take a look. All right, so I got the unit out of the box, and here's what we're dealing with. You can see there is quite a difference. This includes a 10 inch touch screen on the aftermarket unit. It does look pretty factory, especially if you have an EX and you know what it looks like. Uh, the volume control knob just looks a little different, but it does have the physical volume control, which is good. On the back of the radio, you have a bunch of different connections. Um, lots of features to go over with this. It's pretty much just like any other Android radio. Runs on Android 8.1. Uh, this does use an Intel processor, which makes it a little bit different than most. And it actually includes uh, a cell modem inside of the radio. So if you buy a SIM card that goes into the slot here, you can actually have your own cellular connection. And in turn, I would imagine you'd be able to have your own Wi-Fi network inside of the car based off of the radio. Uh, for my purposes, though, I will not be using that. I will just be using the Wi-Fi hotspot on my phone to provide the network connection for this stereo. All right, so we'll go ahead and set the new stereo aside for a moment. And the first thing we're going to be doing is removing the factory radio. And it's actually not too hard. You only need a Phillips head screwdriver. And I'm going to use this pry tool here. In this case, you have to remove the factory climate control and if it's the first time it's ever come out it might be a little tricky so if you put it under here you just need to be careful not to scratch things and we'll just give it a little tug on that side and we'll switch sides give a little tug on that side this is just clipped on here so as you can see on the back there is a wiring harness that will need to be unplugged. Which I may need two hands to do. You can see it's right there. The clip is on the bottom. Okay, so once you get that unclipped, we'll go ahead and set this aside, put it somewhere safe for now. There's a wiring harness for that. And then the only thing holding the radio in, there's these two, if you look here, there's a screw down there and a screw down here. If you remove those and carefully, make sure you stick your fingers in here and grab them and don't let, uh, let them fall. If you drop them down in here, you will not be able to easily get them back. So I warned you. 
and then this will slide out completely. All right, so after both those screws are out, same thing, I'm gonna pry carefully on the unit. Helps if you grab it under here like this, tug. You have to put a little bit of force on it. Okay. Then, as you can see on the back, we have two wiring harness and then two antenna connections that need to be unclipped to take the radio out. Uh, it is a good time to note that if you do take this out and let it sit for any amount of time, when you plug it back in, you will most likely need the radio code. So uh, make sure you have the code for the radio. Hondas have always had some kind of code that you have to enter when you hook them back up to prevent um, theft. So it should be in your owner's manual or you should be able to look it up online. I think you can find it in the radio. I'm not really concerned about that right now, but that's just something to keep in mind. All right, we've got it connected. Something kind of interesting, just reading the sticker here. This was manufactured by Pioneer, which is common for Pioneer to manufacture uh, radios for OEM radios, but all the companies do it. Just something kind of interesting. Doesn't sound like a Pioneer though. Um, we will have to remove the brackets on both sides. So these true screws, both sides of the stock radio need to come off. They will in turn be transferred onto the new radio. So. Go ahead and do that. All right, so there are no instructions included with this radio. Just keep that in mind. But um, so we're gonna be kind of learning together as we go along here. But you do have to remove, also remove these metal clips and transfer them over to here. And then the ones on the side, these little plastic clips, they also have to be removed and put on the new radio as well. So just keep that in mind. And then I'm going to go ahead and check out our wiring and see what exactly needs to be done. Um, the plan is to keep the OEM backup camera working. There are a few considerations. It requires six volts, not 12. And it also, uh, depending on the, if the harnesses are correct for this car or not, they kind of give you a universal Honda interface. So without any instructions and no other videos of anyone doing this, we're kind of winging it here. So we're gonna to learn together what we need to do to make everything work. All right, so the first thing I'm trying to look at is the antenna connector. So the new stereo uses a factor, or a uh, pretty standard aftermarket stereo plug. So here's the other connector that comes from the antenna. But not only does it have an antenna plug, it's got another wired plug. And it does fit this adapter, and there's this single white wire that comes out and goes to another harness. Well, there is nowhere for this to plug in that I can see as of now. So what I need to do is identify what that wire is. I believe it is for a powered antenna or like an amplifier, but I'm going to check right now. All right, so I got my hands on the factory wiring diagram for the audio system for the CRV here. And this includes both whether you have an EX or an LX say EX or higher trim, all trim levels. So the first thing I'm going to do is look up that connector, the antenna connector, which is right here. You can see we have one, two, and three. So if we look here, it says E1, power source for AM, FM antenna amplifier. And then Position two, the AM FM signal. Position three is the shield or the ground for the antenna. So it is correct. That is a, for an antenna amplifier. All right, well, actually, I just found this other antenna adapter in the box, which makes a little more sense. Uh, this plugs, again, directly into our antenna. And then it has the antenna connector wire and then it plugs it into the back of the stereo. So that should make a little more sense, make things work a little bit better. So the next main thing I'm gonna look at, this is the main harness here that comes with it. And like I said, this is what plugs into the back of the factory stereo. And then here, are the gray plugs are your plugs to, to interface in the factory wiring. So we only have two plugs, and there are four on here. So obviously some things are not gonna be used. One thing I can tell, 
right away that these don't all necessarily match up. All right, so in our case, uh, this connector here, which contains your main power wires, your uh, speaker cables, all that plugs in to this main connector here that we removed from the stereo. And then here's the other stereo connector. It's longer and thinner. And that plugs into this connector here. And the only things that are really on this are some auxiliary ports. There is a camera wire here. So there's also this other connector here that has a camera wire running out of it and the blue wire would be the trigger wire that runs into this CAN box. The only thing is I don't see that blue wire running to this set of cables and the backup camera does have to have a 6 volt power supply. So I guess the easiest way to kind of troubleshoot this would just be to go ahead and plug these all in and then plug it into the stereo and turn it on and see what works and what doesn't work and then we can go from there to troubleshoot exactly what we have to do to make this work. All right, so I've got our main harness plugged in and the antenna, which is all I'm going to hook up for now. I kind of set this here in place. Put the key in, turn it forward, and we'll see what happens. Well, that was awfully fast. Okay, unfortunately, Okay, so you can see it actually shows you what doors are open on the car. If I open the driver's side door, so we, I can already tell, and the passenger door is open, that things are working, and there is communication with the CAN bus network, so that's good. We have sound. So that's good. So let's go ahead and fire up the radio here. See if we are even able to get stations without that antenna adapter plugged in. All right, so we do have sound. Definitely does not sound very good. So I'm gonna try plugging in that wire and we'll see what happens. All right, so you see here in the back of the radio, I actually did find the proper antenna connector wire, it just wasn't initially standing out to me. Okay, well, unfortunately, these are both female connectors, but if I hold them together, I don't know if you can hear, the stereo immediately got much better. So, definitely need to be connected, but they did not give us the correct connection. It's female to female. So, I'm gonna go ahead and cut those off and put a male and female spade terminal on there, and then I'll plug it back together and we will move on. All right, so I actually found a male uh, barrel connector, so I just put that in, connected our amp wire. Discovered something else, this uh, wire here actually is a USB port, and that's for your one port that's down under here that, to connect to the radio that has a picture of a phone on it. And then they actually include in the kit here this little adapter that plugs into that, and then this plugs into the back of one of the USB ports on the radio. So you'll be able to utilize your factory USB port with the radio. And this does have two USB ports, and they do include in the box some extension cables. So what I will probably do is extend the other cable into the glove box. That way if you needed to plug something like a flash drive or something with your music or whatever else into the other USB port, we'll plug it in, in there. And supposedly this radio is capable of supporting Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Uh, a lot of these Android steers, you have to have a separate dongle as like the interface. So I don't know if that's built into one of these USB ports. We will find that out. But I'm going to go ahead and plug the USB port in as well. I'm also going to hook up the GPS antenna real quick. I am in the garage, but we'll be able to get an idea if it's working. This is the antenna here. Uh, it does not need to be on the roof. You can mount it under the dash. Um, up under here and I can't really show you but if you stick your hand in here you will feel you want it to be as close to the top as long as there's no metal above it you should be fine as long as it's in the plastic and as far forward as possible so I'm going to use a little bit of double-sided stick tape on the back of the actual antenna itself 
and then I'm going to stick it to the top of the vent, the plastic on the vent, so it's up here in the window, and it should get great coverage. And then the back of it, there's a little one of these red cat ports over here is marked GPS. We'll screw that on. Um, these are your two cellular antennas, which I showed you a little bit ago. So if you are planning on using the cellular modem, you need to hook those up. The best best place to run those would be up in the front window somewhere. Uh, there's there are two antennas for your LTE diversity, so just keep that in mind. Uh, again, you could put them under the dash somewhere. You just won't have as good a cell reception. So it depends on if you live in a city or a rural area. Keep that in mind. All right, so I've got our two USB ports connected. We've got our antenna connected. Uh, we've got line in connected right here. It says left and right in. That's coming from the factory wiring. Uh, we've got our GPS antenna connected right here. Right now I've just got it sitting here. Um, and I believe that's it for now. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it back in, go through some of the functions, see what works, what doesn't work. Check the backup camera real quick, see if that works. Have a feeling it's not going to work. We're gonna have to address that, but we'll do that right now. All right. Shut this door here. So now try the radio again. It smells like a spruce uh, forest. Sounds much better. <laughs> All right, so one thing to note, the steering wheel controls, they work out of the box. So that's good. If we hit the phone button, the whole phone menu comes up. If we hit the voice button, what time is it? Google Voice pops right up. Now we're offline, so it's not gonna be able to help us and the time's wrong, but everything works right out of the box so that's good news so now let's try the backup camera i'm curious to see I'll put it in reverse here look at that it actually works right out of the box And it changes the camera, just like the factory one. Very, very neat. What a pleasant surprise. It even says on the listing that it does not work with the backup camera. So that is exciting. All right, we'll turn it off. All right, so like I said, I'm presently surprised with the backup camera situation. Um, everything seems to work. So I'm gonna go ahead and make um, all the connections final, tie everything up. Go ahead and get this GPS antenna set in position. Then I'm gonna get this all buttoned back up real quick. That way we can walk through the stereo, give you a quick overview of what I think of it real quick. All right, so I got the GPS antenna stuck up on there. Like I said, you have to reach your hand around, it's snake around, you'll feel right under here is the top of the, uh, I think it's the top of the vent here, and you'll feel there's a flat spot. You can stick that too. Um, got the wires, just use a little electrical tape to kind of organize them a little bit better. Uh, real quick before I bundle this up, um, a couple of the connections on the back that I'm not going to be using. Like I said, you got your cell antenna connections here. This is a video in, so if you had an external video source of some sort. Um, we have on the back here, we have outputs for subwoofer. Uh, this is a uh, digital output, SPDIF or whatever, so the, the digital signal processor, and you can actually, if you're into the really high-end sound systems, you could output digital audio from this unit here. And then, this is front, left, front right, rear right, rear left, all individual outputs that can you can use. Also, external microphone, which I will not be using. There is a built-in microphone right here on the uh, faceplate, but some people recommend using an external microphone for better sound, so you could possibly route that up, you know, mount it up somewhere a little bit higher. This right here, this black plastic piece that kind of sticks out, that is where you would put your SIM card, and it does use a standard, look here, larger, I can't remember what that's called now, 
but it uses like a full size SIM card. The best way to explain it. So like you know, your nano SIM and your micro SIM from your phones would not fit that. But yeah, so you could have your you know built in LTE, which would be nice if you had a nice cheap plan that you used only for car. That'd be pretty cool. We've got all our USB connections made. We're gonna plug our antenna back in. Besides that, everything is ready to be buttoned up. And then I'll go ahead and put the uh, HVAC panel back in and we'll get it fired back up and we'll go through it together. So I think as you could tell, I was rather pleasantly surprised at the backup camera situation. Go ahead and start the car. All right, so you can see it's got the fast boot feature, so it just comes right on. There's no boot up time. Uh, if we turn on our headlights, see that the lighting comes on. I am going to adjust the colors of that to make it match more. The lighting comes on, the screen dims. Uh, connected to Wi-Fi. There are different launcher setups that you could choose from. This is the one that comes on it by default. I do kind of like this one. Uh, but there are ways to change that. I'll show you here in just a second. Turn off the screen. There's power. The brightness button. And I want to do a standby. Settings. Alright, so you set up your Wi-Fi. This is all in your settings here. Obviously, if you have a SIM card, it'll give you the information. Oh, it says it's empty right now. Wi-Fi, you know, set up your Wi-Fi network. Uh, let's see what more. Mobile network, hotspot and tethering. Just gives you basic Android setup there. One thing that I forgot to mention earlier in the video too, at the beginning is, I paid full price for this stereo. So this is my honest, unbiased review on something that I bought to use for myself. So I was not given any compensation by the manufacturer of the stereo. Just get that out of the way. You'll see a lot of these videos on YouTube where people were given free products to supposedly review them. That is not the case here. Okay, so display settings. You can change your wallpaper. Um, you can set it if you want it to go to a black screen after a certain amount of time, kind of a screen saver. Displayed net switch. I don't know what that does. I'll leave that alone. Sound settings. You know, your loudness control keypad tones, I have them turned off. So you want the amplifier on or off, subwoofer on or off, don't have either one. Equalizer, obviously, what it says it is. Uh, we'll go through the sound here in a minute. General, so brake wire for video motion. So what that means is, do you want to be able to watch video while driving down the road, obviously, it's not okay for the driver to watch a video, but if you have passengers in here, you know, you can set that to off. Therefore, it will allow video. Uh, press any key to start. I think that's just to turn it on. Um, auto start navigation. I believe that means when you turn on the car, it will automatically load up to your navigation screen, and you can select which app you want to use. It comes with Google Maps installed. You can install any other navigation app, whatever you want to use screen display time. Not sure what that's for. We'll try it out. Mirror view and reverse image if your backup camera is the wrong direction. Mute audio when reversing. So when I put it in reverse, it would actually bring down the audio. Okay. Uh, and then you can choose if you want it to just reduce the sound a certain a preset amount. That's what it will do. Like I already showed you, the backup camera works. It even lets you have the, the CAN bus control over the camera, which is really, really neat. Uh, backlight control, time control. That's whether or not you want this to be controlled off of the time of day, or small light control would be, you know, if you turn on your headlights, you can see. <sighs> I don't know what default volume switch is. It's default boot volume. A lot of this stuff isn't really important right now, um, but the GPS mixing is 
when you have that GPS app running and it talks over, save the radio plane, how much you want it to mix. That's what that has to do with it. You can play with those settings. Uh, so lantern settings, is this is where we're talking about these backlights here. So see, you can see I'm changing the colors just by pressing these. So I want white. But that white isn't really... as white as it could be, I would think. Let's play with it a little bit here to get it to look, to match the factory white. That's pretty close, I'd say. I'll play with that more later, so yeah, like that. Just click out of there. Steering wheel settings. Please hold the button the steering wheel to the learning state. So you can program whatever you want these buttons to do on the steering wheel. They can do a bunch of different things. Um, you can reprogram them to not only be you know your volume, but maybe you press and hold the button. So if I press, that's our volume button. Um, but I do not want to change any of these settings because out of the box, I really like the settings, you know, you get your source button, you know, scrolls through your different sources. So, uh, your vo voice control, like I showed you, is Google. What time is it? The time is 2.58 p.m. So you get your full Google read out there. Uh, uh, navigation app, this is like I said, where you can select your default navigation app. Uh, depending on what you download, you can download an offline navigation app. That way, even when you don't have a data connection, you know, it'll be just like, uh, kind of like the OEM setup when you have navigation. It'll work. Factory settings. Right here, you need a password. We'll get back to that in just a second. Um, user settings. Your locations. You obviously want Google location services turned on. Security. Find my device. This is the best part. You can put a screen lock on. So if you're in for service, set yourself a lock. That way people cannot go through your, your files. Uh, back up and reset. Google. This is just like if you have an Android phone, you'll be familiar with all this stuff. You, know, you can add your account, your Google account. That way all your um, uh, settings are synced and your uh, contacts and everything else. Your YouTube account, all that stuff. All right, so date and time settings, accessibility settings, developer options. You need a password for that. Get me all the way out here. About device, let's take a look at it. Eight Android 8.1, and this is this little floating assistant. You tap that, it kind of gives you some options. You can turn that off if you don't want it on there. Battery level, it's funny, things has a battery. It's probably because this is a phone ROM, obviously, being to have a built-in cell chip. Uh, SIM status, IMEI information, it's just like, you know, any phone would have, Bluetooth, so pretty neat. It's got the Intel OctaCore 1.8 gigahertz processor, here's our MCU version, you know, etc. So, that is the gist of your settings menu. All right, so I told you a minute ago we were going to be, I was going to show you a little bit more about that factory settings. Uh, I will say that um, use this at your own risk. If you screw it up, it's not my fault, okay? But for those of you who are a little bit more techie and want to get into this stuff a little bit more, password is 3368. All right, so it takes you into here. It says original car agreement, so it doesn't really translate too well, but... You can see the options. Uh, these are kind of like your factory settings. If you have automatic start and stop on the car, radar display on and off, which we actually do not have on here. Reverse parking lines, reverse track reversal, door on off. What that is is your doors. You can see it works like that. Um, the only thing I noticed is that the back door, if I open the driver's side door here, you see it's, it's incorrect shows the wrong door. So, if I switch this button here, rear door exchange off. Now it shows the correct side. So that's something you may need to do on your in your situation. 
uh, AC information. I could show you um, in theory. It's supposed to be able to show you your uh, HVAC stuff. Uh, car audio type. Auxiliary or iPod. Okay. Don't know. Not sure. Okay, temperature. Do you want degrees Celsius, degrees Fahrenheit? We want Fahrenheit. Uh, CAN box upgrade. I don't, I don't want to mess with that. Uh, car protocol type upgrade. So, okay. So you can see. That's what's in that first part of that menu. Okay, so car model. This is where we're not going to mess with any of this because it works. But it is set on Jade, which is interesting, considering this is a CRV. Play with that more later. Ten are normally on. So the format for the the video coming from the back. If you have HD, boot logo screen. So this is an important one. Right here, it's currently set up to Joying. You can change it to Honda. So sometimes the radio does go through a complete boot up, uh, especially if it's been sitting for a long time, or you reset it. So you can display what you want it to show. Obviously, in this case, we want it to show the Honda logo. So click the Honda logo. You see it changes that. Okay. Play with that. That's what's in there. Touchscreen calibration, panel key learning. That's for these right here. They work. I'm not going to mess with them. Hide status bar. I shouldn't really be even messing with this. Sleep mode. Okay, sleep mode setting. So this determines whether you want it to do a complete shutdown or go to sleep. So we want it to sleep. Front view camera. Cancel the reverse into the front view. I don't know. We're not going to play with all this. Door lock interface. All right. Don't know what that is. Reverse power supply. No. You can upgrade your MCU. So I'm just kind of going through here just to show you what all is in here. USB protocol 2.0. So just change it to 1.1 or 2.0. TV, video output settings, that's your resolution. I don't know what this is, OBD. Oh, I know what that is. Let's go ahead and turn that on and see what happens. Okay, so this is, like I said, the default launcher right here. It said on the site you'd be able to choose different ones. I have not been able to figure out how to do that on here, as I showed you. There's your brightness control. Turn the headlights off, it brightens up. That's the lower brightness for nighttime driving. As I already showed you the radio. It does have Christmas break. Um, the RDS system. We'll show you what's playing. And set your stations. Or you can manually drag it quicker. Okay. So that's how that all works. So it's a radio. A lot of people don't even listen to radio anymore. I do personally. Um, you can drag, move this stuff all around. If you don't want it on the screen, you can delete it off this screen. If you click this, it's just like an Android phone. It brings you to all your options. Uh, these are widgets. Your choices for widgets, as you can see. One thing I do not like, obviously, is this widget right here shows the temperature in Celsius. That does me no good at all. If you do put the radio on and then go to the home screen, See, I figured it would show the radio on here, but it does not. 
So yeah, the, the, the customization is unlimited. If, you, if you've ever had an Android stereo before, you understand that. See, I don't like that. I can just delete this stuff off here and put whatever I want on, on my home screen here, okay? So, you know, unlimited amount of customization, what you want to do. Um, these are your Bluetooth settings. We can pair our phone in here, and then we can do Bluetooth music. It is A2DP. It will show you the, the artist and title on here. Um, one thing you may be interested in is the Android Auto functionality, and I've never had one of these that work quite like this, but it actually uses this Z-Link app right here. And Z-Link used to be something much different. It was a bulky, horrible application. And so far it looks like it's a little bit better if I just plug into my Android Note 9 here. And those of you with Apple, it'll be a different experience. But if I plug into here, click on the Z-Link app, you do have to go through the setup the first time. Um, but it says, it, obviously it does work. Uh, you know, CarPlay Wi-Fi, CarPlay with a connection, and Android Auto will only work via a USB cable. All right, so Android Auto starts up on my phone. You can see we now have Android Auto. This is Pandora. It's all for the okay, and then it is the new version of Android Auto. Obviously, if you have it on your phone, all the apps that you have that can be used will pop up on here. So it does work. It works very well, no problems. What time is it? It's 3.11. All right, the only thing I noticed when the, uh, that I've noticed, when I look, it just, just crashed. Okay, see, so I spoke too soon. It is rebooting though on its own, which is good. But I did notice that the Google Voice sounds kind of scratchy. Music sounds really good. We're gonna stand on top. Very good. But the uh, what is the meaning of life? According to the late 20th century philosophers Bill and Ted, sounds life's purpose is to be scratchy. excellent to each other. And party on. All right, so that's enough of that. So that's how that works. It does work. Like I said, it's a little buggy. Uh, not the greatest thing I've ever seen. Probably could still use one of the interface boxes, but the nice thing about this is that works directly plugged in to your USB port. And that was plugged in to the factory USB port down in the center console there. So it does work. Uh, it is impressive. Like I said, you click the uh, navigation button either here or here. Um, you can set whatever app you want to be your default navigation app. Let me unplug this and start again. It'll automatically start. You can change that in the settings. So, um, yeah, to connect automatically. So when I connect my phone, it will automatically um, bring up that uh, piece of software there. That home button is a little doesn't work the greatest. There's a million ways to get to home, but I noticed that it's not the greatest thing. You can change your wallpaper. You can use live wallpapers. Um, there's just one example. You can go to the Play Store, download whatever you want uh, for your wallpaper. So, so far, I'm impressed. It sound The sound quality is really good. It is definitely an upgrade uh, I love the, the integrated backup camera. There's really no fuss. This is a very easy installation. You saw, I basically just plugged everything in um, and it worked. And the hardest part was probably transferring the clips from the old stereo to new stereo. It's a very solid installation. Uh, we had our EX model and this looks even better than that. It's bigger and it's much more functional, believe it or not. So I like it. Um, Sound quality is good, even with the built-in microphone, no problems. Uh, if you make a test call, you can figure that out. Uh, like I said, you've got your map button here. You can specify audio controls. That brings up um, the MP3 app, so you could you know, plug, like I said, a thumb drive in uh, or a hard drive in your uh, 
glove box there and all your video or music files could be on here you can download any music app you want you know for that matter you don't have to use the built-in one so it's uh the customization is endless all right so hopefully the video was helpful hopefully you enjoyed this and it was informational i made this video because i was going planning on doing this upgrade anyway and i could not find anyone else who has done this so i really like the look of this over uh, an aftermarket solution, you know, in the LX, um, you can get a this panel, and then you put like a regular, you know, double din aftermarket stereo, and it looks absolutely horrible. It looks like garbage. So this right here looks like fat, like a factory solution, and that's why I like it. And it's amazing, 10 inch display. It's an HD display. It looks great. So if you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment. Um, I'll put a link in the description to where I got this and uh, hopefully the link stays updated. I bought this on eBay. You can, you can buy it directly from the seller. Like I said, I bought it from Joying. There's one other model that's very similar to this. It's not through Joying. So I can only tell you based upon my experience that you know I like this, I like the specs on this, and it was cheaper than the other manufacturer that it's basically the same thing. These are generic Chinese made Android stereos, and then each seller kind of customizes it to their specifications and puts their software on it. So, you know, that's all I can really say about that. The longevity of it, I guess we'll find out. I'll report back if I have any problems. So far, it's good. It's a lot less buggy than some of the old Android stereos I've had. So just keep that in mind. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully it was helpful. Leave a like, comment. Be sure to subscribe, especially if you want to see more Honda CRV content. And until next time, we'll see you later.